500 of them, stark naked, screaming their heads off, all with spears. <laughs> they weren't very nice, uh, spears. Well, they say it's much worse now, but these young fellas nowadays, they haven't got the stomach for it. Well, there's not many years when it comes to a spear. They talk sense, man. All I say is if there is a war, which God forbid, then you can say goodbye to England, home and beauty. Because the young chaps now, they can't fight. No drummer. Oh, far oh, what about us? What about the Duke of Glendon's light infantry, eh? What about the dogs? But you said yourself the dogs aren't what they were. It's all this education and machinery and going to the pictures. It's all right to have a good regiment, but where are the men to fight in it? Sure, yeah, that's the point. Where are they? National crisis. I tell you, Fred, things are getting serious. Do you know what time I got home last night? Half past ten. Winston's having another go at him upstairs. Oh, well, that's something. You know that fellow Westlake, National Liberal, Bromwich East? Do you know how long he went on last night? Hour and forty minutes solid. I know. I know. You're dead right. It's the third time this week. I tell you, Fred, my missus is getting proper fed up. We're going to have a war. Right. Let them start one now. Let them get on with it. Let us get unmolded to our suppers for once in a change. War? Not a chance of it, madam. Not this year. It's not in anybody's interest, is it, really? Can I get a passage for California? Yes, at the end counter over there. Payable to the agency, if you don't mind. Just Enco, no limited. Now, let's see. You'll arrive in Benghazi on the 20th and spend three days there. Are we likely to run into any sandstorm? No, madam. You know, confidentially, the Italians haven't been very clever about their publicity. If you ask me, Libya's the only unspoiled playground in the Mediterranean. <laughs> War, Mrs. Williams. That's the trouble, you see. It may start at any moment. We'd like to do lots of repairs, but our hands are tied. They're not tied when it comes to taking the rent. If times were normal, Mrs. Williams, we'd be giving you a bath with a geezer and new paint and everything of the best. I don't want any geezer. I want the guttering put right. Drip, drip, drip all over the upstairs. It nearly drives you mad. Oh, we can't all be thinking of ourselves in times like these, Mrs. Williams. And with the summer coming on, it won't be bothering you so much, will it? Me. I've only had it six months, and now they're talking about a war. I won't be able to get any spares. Foreign. It's a war, you may not be able to get any petrol. Don't talk, silly man. How am I going to be able to get home? Nearly a quarter past, Jim. Won't be a moment. You're in a bit of a hurry, aren't you? Oh, that again. I've got to be at the drill hall by half past. Teddy Torvalds. Now, look here, Jimmy boy. I was in the last lot. Three years at the war office. Nearly ruined my health. You don't want to start looking for trouble. If there's going to be a war, and mark you, they haven't told us to keep cool after Munich, I wouldn't put those new pumps up. But if there is going to be a war, the whole place goes over to munitions. Just like that. And with that knack of yours and my good management, why, there'll be a packet in it for all concerned. Enough for you to buy that little place of your own you're always talking about. And it's patriotic, too. Hello, Mrs. Perry. Hello, Mr. Jackson. Coming, Jim? I can't get my buttons like this. Buttons? Listen to him. A man with your husband's brains playing at soldiers. It isn't as if you've got any rifles or machine guns or any of the real things. Oh, but they have, haven't you, Jim? Well, of course we have, darling. Now, hurry up. The trouble is to get them all clean. They've got so many new guns and tanks and... Tanks? Things. I thought he was in the infantry. Well, they have little tanks. You know, carriers. Well, the papers say you haven't got a thing. Not a thing! You don't want to believe everything you read in the papers, Mr. Jackson. I only wish I could take you along to the drill hall tonight. You'd be amazed. So much stuff there, we know where to put it. Hardly room to move. Wish I could take you along. It'd be a great eye-opener. Now, this is the 1914 type. When we get a gun, and we may any day now, we shall probably get the 1917 type with improvements. I used it myself in 1918. The main thing is, keep it clean. Mind you don't drop the magazines, and remember the eight stoppages. A bit of mud on one of the feed pools, and you'll have trouble. A bent magazine, you've got more trouble. Hey. Shan't be a minute, old man. But it's a good old gun, and in my humble opinion, the perfect answer to attacks from the air. So if hostile aeroplanes try to interfere with you, all you've got to do is to touch them up a bit with the old Lewis. Got it? Uh, we ought to have dug trenches at Dunkirk, uh, let the Germans through, then taken them in the rear. What can you do with a rifle against a tank? Oh, we had our troubles uh, in the Sudan and in Basudaland. But we got through all right. The dogs always do. <laughs> what was you in? The dogs. D.O.G.'s, Duke of Glendon's Light Infantry. You ought to know that young fella. What you in? Parachutes. Oh, the umbrella danglers. Who does your marching for you? I don't doubt they could have done with us in Greece. Yeah, there's another bungled engagement for you. Surrounded? All right. Form square, same as what old General McNeil did at Chewakin. You'll be too old to remember that. 
Mm -hmm. Times have changed, Dad. He's right, Bobby. I don't doubt they use bayonets nowadays, the like of which we've never seen. Great long beggars. No, nothing's changed. Except that life's much easier than it used to be. Uh, now, all them battle courses, a lot of nonsense. Anything to get out of marching. Cushy compared to what we had to do. Up to our knees in water to cross a stream. No time to take your boots off. No joke it was. Nowadays, they're afraid of getting their feet wet. Might get in a draft and catch cold. A lot of nonsense. One sergeant we had used to shout and scream just to make it sound like a real battle. Wouldn't like that sort of caper nowadays. They're too worried about them fancy battle suits of theirs, these young fellas. Keeping a nice crease in their trousers to go out with a girl. No buttons to clean like we had. They don't know what polishing is. And another thing. We didn't get broke off for a cup of tea every five minutes like they do now. We had to keep on marching, dressing properly by the right, with bayonets gleaming and everything. Looked lovely, it did. Didn't feel so lovely, though. No joke when you've got sopping wet feet and the sergeant's got his eye on you, especially when it's hot. Didn't have no feelings, those old sergeants. No taking it easy with them. Left, right, left, right. Had to watch your step, you did. And if you made a mistake in the drill, you all had to go back and do it again. Much easier. I don't know why they don't call some of us up. Some of the old dogs. <laughs> We'd show them. <laughs> no need to, Dad. Look, big new call-up. Fat lot of good that'll do. Duke of Glendon's Light Infantry. Well, I know it's wrong. Mr. Davenport said so himself. He said definitely they were going to get me deferred. I, I was on the list, he said so himself. Now eat your egg. I think you rely too much on Mr. Davenport. Oh, you don't know him. Or oh, he'll do something. It's one thing about the firm. They never let you down. I'm sorry, Parsons, but it's been agreed by the company that Mr. Thurtle in the bargain basement will deal with all deferments in the future, so if you care to go and see him... But you must realize, you know, there's a war on. Only key men are deferred now. Oh, I understand, sir, but you think there's a chance that Mr. Thurtle might do something? You see my wife. We've lost Collins from refrigerators and Barker from winter sports this week. There was nothing Mr. Thurtle could do for them. I see, sir. I'm sorry, Parson. Mr. Thurtle, please, quickly. No, thank you. By the way, Parsons, I think it might be less, um, shall I say, embarrassing for both of us if we uh, forget and disregard any differences in status which may have existed at the, um, at the store. Yes, sir. Thank you. I must say, I think it very, to put it mildly, thoughtless of the powers that be to allow such a situation to arise. Oh, I do agree, sir. After all, it's not as if my activities were confined to toys. I was in charge of the officer's kit. Yes, and garden ornaments. I know, but it's the officer's kit which makes... Uh, oh, no matter. I must say, I think the Ministry are ill-advised. About your case, sir? In general, Parsons, in general. This free? I believe so. Confidentially, I took the opportunity of suggesting to the managing director when I was saying au revoir that Mr. Thurtle is no longer pulling his weight. That should do a lot of good, sir. Well, at any rate, I've taken the matter out of the firm's hands now and written direct to my MP. Who's he? I beg your pardon. Who's he, your MP? Sir Henry Chalmers Thompson. Ah, old liver lips. Talked for two hours and a half on the Brompton sewage scheme bill. Couldn't hear yourself for snores. <laughs> do you know Sir Henry? I'm in the house. A member? No, I worked there on the boilers. They'll be sorry they let me go. It'll be all right in the summer, but you wait till the winter. They'll be asking questions in the house, all right. Who let Tebrough go off to the army? There's no one can work them dampers the way I can. They'll freeze, you see. Well, you called up, so are we. All the same, I don't think you should refer to Sir Henry in the way you did. No. Listen, there's only one good man ever got into Parliament. Who would that be? Leading Guy Fawkes. I wonder what time we get to Hacklesfield. I have no idea. 3.11. Change of crew, don't we? Can do, can do. Well, there's the Derby way. That's much more comfortable. Doesn't get you until 5, 7, though. Oh, we've got to be there by 4. What are you called up to? Yes. What, all of you? Come on. Well, it's all adventure, isn't it? Depends on your previous occupation. Oh, I was very well situated. Big travel people. Butlers, know them? Why, well, I suppose you know all the trains, then. Well, I don't think you'll be able to catch me out in Europe. Pre-war, that is. As a matter of fact, I'm a bit continental myself. Swiss grandmother. Well, your job's over for the duration, anyway. Oh, I don't know. People still got to travel. 
However, pack up your troubles in your old kit bag. That's what I always say. By the way, um, any of you in the scout? Hurry up, Maisie. The 220 will be here in a minute. All right. We've got one pair of hands, haven't I? Yes. If you're not too busy, we'd like the same again. I've had a wonderful life, though. Honestly, I can't grumble. It's all been like that. You got a car? Yeah. What make? It's a giant. Ah, there's a smashing little job. I've got a Lagonda. I'll race you sometime soon to get out of this ruddy army. Can't last much longer, can it? Not the war? Hope not. Too much rent control. Oh, and then I'll buy a new car. I'll buy a Mercedes. Oh, smashing. Wonder how many more there'll be of us. I don't know. I suppose some have come from London. Poor much. What do you think of it all? Very little. Yes, I think you're right. I was in two minds about coming at all. Here's the 220. Harry Maisie. All right, all right. Don't get all head up. Well, anyway, cheers. Cheers. This is Crew. Crew Station. Crew. Passengers for Liverpool, Shrewsbury, Chester, and the Hacklesfield should change here. Three times a cup of tea. What about it, Mr. Peck? Platform 7. Uh, we've got five minutes. Time for a quick cup. Shall I run and get you a cup, Mr. Davenport? No, no. We'll all go. Hey, can you tell me where does the Hucklesfield train start? Platform from, 7, over the bridge, back half the train there. But are you going there too? I'll oh, say. The Duke of Glendon's light foot sloggers. Come and have a cup of tea. <laughs> in fact, I'm a fellow with a very independent disposition. Can't stand people telling me what to do. And if they try it, then I always want to be rude. In fact, I usually am. Yeah, well, that's why the army will have to put up yes. with me, and not me with the army. Hey, stop shoving, mate, will you? I'm yes. sorry, old man. I'm sorry. Tea? China for me, please. Better get used to char, that's all I got in the army. Ah, oh, good old army. Yes. The thin red line, smashing. I oh, don't blame you for getting bottled. Yes. Are you gentlemen going to Hacklefield? Yes. Right. You too? Yes. Well, my name's Stainer. Can I interest any of you in buying a Rolls Royce or a Bentley? Three teas and a bit of miss, please. Four teas. Four teas. All set for the last lap, eh? Looking forward to it, this bloke. Can't bear well look back on it. No, I wonder when we'll be able to. Mr. Davenport was doing very important work at the time of this call-up. I'll tell you something about the army. It's full of people who want to make you suffer because you're no good at polishing buttons. Well, it might have gone down with the last generation. It might even go down with some of you. But it's not going down with me, because I'm independent. And if they don't like it, I'll walk right out. What are you after doing? Don't you shout at me like that. Not in the army yet, you know. You didn't do it on purpose. That's right. There's a nasty piece of work for you. And this is the way to treat them, see? Scared stiff of me he was. They always are when you stand up for yourself. He looked like a regular. It's fancy putting decent civilians under blokes like that. Hurry up that bit of miss. You can't eat by numbers and sleep by numbers. Have them yelling at you day in and day out. By the left, quick, heat. Shut up, shut up. Oh, dear. There you are, you see. He's ashamed of himself. Hurry up with that bit of mess. We haven't time for tea now. We've got to get across the bridge, you know. Have a, have a bite. No, thank you. I'm rather worried about my digestion. I have a very sensitive stomach. Always did have, didn't you, Mr. Davenport? Right. Where are you going? Get a seat. Yes. It's a good idea. But we were here before some of these people. Calling service. Lost journey without a pass for years. <laughs> Ten gold flakes, please. Ten gold flakes. Passengers yes. for Hacklesfield, your train is leaving from platform seven. All right, jump down, lads. I'll be back in a minute. Doesn't seem such a bad bloke, that corporal. Well, they've got to be Come nice on, to you when you're in civilian up. clothes. Look at this. Breathe natural. That's the idea. Barbarian. Hey, look. Keep those knees up. Nice big strides. Feel the benefit. Come on, pick them up. You the new intake? That's right. Nice tall fella should do well at PT. Stand up now, stand up. Let's see a smile. Make the best of yourself. Come on, stand up, son. Stand up and look me straight in the eyes. That's right. You look a bit weird at the moment. So do you. Uh, too much town life. We'll soon build you up. Smile, nice smile. That's right. Come on, what's the matter with you, lad? Get your hair cut first thing. Make you feel better. And that's an order. 
Gone, you've only been four miles, ought to feel fresh as a daisy. Look up, my lucky lads, I'm coming off, yeah? Then after I got back from Dunkirk, I was sent to the training battalion as a sergeant instructor, and I went to the officer's training unit from there, sir. Our job is to get up to strength again. We'd hoped for trained men, but we've got civilians, whether we like it or not. Some of them came in last week. Thirty more are expected today. You'll probably be looking after them. I expect you'll get pretty fed up with them at first. They won't seem as keen as you are. Then one morning you'll wake up and you'll find you've got a platoon of some of the finest infantry in the world. I don't know how it happens, but it does. Oh, Edwards. Sir? This is Perry. Hello. Very glad to have you. Thank you, sir. You're lucky. You might have been posted to one of the other companies. Paris in France for the 12th Battalion. Uh, NCO? Sergeant, sir. Oh, by the way, has the depot sent you your sergeant yet? I uh, do this afternoon, sir. Name's uh, Fletcher. Regular with seven years service. Well, let me know what you think of him. Right, sir. Right, Perry. I'll leave Captain Edwards to look after you. Sir. Uh, I'm giving him number nine platoon, sir. Fine. I can feel my rheumatics coming back again already. Oh, you'll have to get rid of those before they start us on these courses, chump. Jumping ditches full of broken glass with bullets whistling by. How do you know that? Picture post. I can't understand it. The government puts up walls with broken glass on top to protect its property, then trains blokes to get across it at its own expense. At our expense, man. We, we are just cogs in a great machine. We pay for our own discomfort. These living conditions are most insanitary. Not if we keep all the doors and windows open. I can't sleep with the windows open. How is your stomach, Mr. Davenport? Acute. Mm, that'll be the worry. It's your bowels. Driving my tractor for a week would put it right for you. Were you a farmer then? I wouldn't be here if I was. I worked on a farm though. I have a lassie doing my job now. She's better looking than me, but not for that kind of work. What else did they say in picture post? Oh, yes, sir. When you come to the barbed wire, one fellow lays across it, and all the others run over his back. Oh, shut up, can't you? I'm only telling them. Battle training, they call it. You know, just to get you used to things. Real live bullets they use, too. Well, I won't be shot at merely to gratify some oafish military whim. Then, of course, there's these bayonet charges. Three miles long, uphill. They make you run all the way, too. And then you go on swinging from tree to tree on ropes. You know, Tarzan fashion. Should be very interesting. Why don't you turn it up? You don't know what you're talking about, Beck. What have you got to smile about, Lloyd? Oh, nothing. What a tragedy it all is. I'll get my lumbago back again at this rate. I didn't ought to be in the army. Not really. Any day now. <laughs> Lumbago. Don't they give us sheets as well as blankets? Not in the army. They do in the RAF. I'd never have believed that in a civilized country doctors would have permitted. All right, stop talking. Now pay attention. Now you're going to be number nine platoon. Mr. Perry will be your officer, and I'm your sergeant. Fletcher's my name. Sergeant Fletcher. Got it? Now, I'm used to having the best platoon in the battalion. And I'm going to have it again. Now, this is the program. You can take it easy tonight, but no leaving the camp. There'll be hot supper served for you in the dining room at 7. The canteen's open till 9. Lights out at 10. Corporal Robbins will be round to tell you about the blackout and so forth. Tomorrow, you get issued with your kit and get inoculated. On Monday, we start work proper. Got it? Right. Let's have your names. Davenport. Right. Yes? A parson, sir. Your name? Beck, Sergeant. And yours? Lloyd. You? Stainer. Yes? Luke. Yes? Brewer. Yes? Truscott. Scrap me that dance! Help me! Leave it, leave it. I'll tell you when to pick it up. Squad, stand it. Ace! That man in the front rank there on the left. Stay there. Corporal, put him in the correct ace position. Feet 12 inches apart, stomach in, arms straight. Brace yourself up. All right, Corporal. Squad, shun! As you were, wake up. What's your name, Daventry? Davenport. You're too slow. Five minutes behind the others. Think what you're doing. And you too. And you, Lloyd, wait for the word of command before you move. Look to your front. Officer coming, Sergeant. All right, Corporal, fall in. Pick it up. Squad. Chen! Sandy, is this? Sir. Squad, steady! Ice! What's your name? Truscott. Sir, stand to attention when the officer addresses you. I take these names to the tailor's own, Fletcher. Very good, sir. Look to the front. 
think you're going to enjoy the army, Truscott? Well, I put down for the Navy, sir. Your name? Lloyd, sir. Go on, stand at ease. Oh, this is far too big. Very good, sir. Keep those trousers well hitched up. Yes. What's your name? Herbert Davenport, sir. What's the trouble with the boots? They're a little tight in the toe, sir. I'm rather a high instep. What was your job before you came here? Rather an important one, actually, sir. I was in charge of three departments at Burbage's, including an uh, officer's kit. Too big, Sergeant Fletcher. And the trousers are a little loose in the seat. Your name? The parson, sir. Bills, what do you think a barrack room inspection is a joke? Lay it out proper. You've got another five tons to shift yet? Come on, you'll do it properly if I have to keep you here all night? Six men to scrub out the cookhouse. You, 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 and you. Hey, straight! Wake up, that man! No, you can't have 48 hours. You've only been in a month. What do you think this is, a holiday camp? Stand up, pick up that step. You six are detailed for guard tonight. Got it? It is a life, isn't it, eh? A child of three doesn't take as much pleasure in making a noise as Sergeant Fletcher. Well, it's just like I said. Putting us under guys like that, it's criminal. Two guards in one week. No, 13 days, it is. Oh, shut up. Who was it made him turn nasty in the first place, spilling his tea? He also changed his tune. Who's going to make him? I am. When? As soon as I know my way around a bit. And when will that be? Ten years' time? I've only done six weeks so far. Will you look at that spud? Throw it away. Yeah, don't throw a perfectly good spud away. Give it here. You're a nuisance, you are. I still don't see how Fletcher could have remembered us all. I had my back to him. He remembered us all right. Just like I said in the first place. The army. Hey, that man! Hello, what's that? That man! Take those hands out of your pockets! Yes, you! There's no parade. Hark at him shouting. Cad. Look at him. You think he'd know those letters off by heart by now? I don't seem to get any letters somehow. Come on, you. You're not getting out of this. We're saving yours for you. We're going to shoot that rat the day we get live ammo. What was all the shouting? I'm walking back from the lats, quietly, committing no offence. All at once I feel the old nose running. So, of course, my hand goes in my pocket to get the old anky out. Next thing I hear is that voice of his yelling at me across the square. You know, from near the naffy. Take your hands out of your pockets, that man. That man. You wouldn't think we were human beings. You can't blow your nose, you can't now. There you are, I warned you, didn't I, all of you? You did, Geoffrey. Been just the same even if we hadn't have spilt his tea. Should have thrown it in his face. Golly. I'd love to have done it. It was boiling hot. You keep on saying that. I'd like to see you do it. Well, I would have done it. Steady, you make me sick. Oh? You keep on talking. You never do a damn thing. Well, what can I do? Go and see the officer. Oh, don't be mad. You'll be within your rights. Yes, and would they ever forget? I tell you, Lloyd, they've got you where they want you. I'm going to see the officer. Never. Is that wise? No, but I hate gas bags. What are you going to say, mate? Oh, I've got plenty to say. Be careful. Not mutiny. You know what that leads to. Look out, look out. Here it comes. All right, will you finish here? Report down to the quartermaster's stores. He's got some scrubbing for you. Oh, and by the way, the next man I catch walking about the camp with his hands in his pockets will be put on a charge. Got it? Right, Sergeant. Yes? I want to see the officer, please. What for? My reasons are private. All right. Write out the application in the proper manner and let me have it. And I'll see if Mr. Perry can see you. Thanks, Sergeant. Right. When you all get through, get out of the stores. Well, look, Lloyd, I'll tell you what to say. Go to hell, Stanner. Well, if there hadn't been this trouble at Crewe Station, you think that Sergeant Fletcher might have been easier with you, is that it? Yes, I do, sir. Now, these extra guard duties you're talking about, according to the roasters, you've done no more than anybody else. Do you think that because of what happened at Crewe, you may be blaming Sergeant Fletcher for doing what's really his job? It isn't only the guard, sir. You've been in the army, what? Six weeks? Isn't that rather a short time to make up your mind about a soldier like Sergeant Fletcher? I wouldn't have come to you, sir, if I hadn't felt justified. But anyway, you made a complaint. Now it's my job either to investigate it myself or refer the whole thing to the company commander. Would you like to take it up with Captain Edwards? If you do, you'll have to make a formal complaint in front of Sergeant Fletcher. No, I'd rather leave it to you, sir. Very well, Lloyd. Thank you, sir. Sentries! Bus! Quick!
Look here, Evan, I've been thinking. If he didn't actually say nothing, he must have hinted. For the hundredth time, he said he'd look into it. That's all. Well, for goodness sake, shut up. Told you it wouldn't do any good. No, but if he looks into it like what he said... Rua, fetch the cocoa. Right, Sergeant. Won't be having cocoa at the Sergeant's mess party. Wine, women and song. <laughs> <laughs> You went to the competitions. I'll bet you that you Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. It won't have been bitter. Thank you, sir. Have a sandwich, right, sir. sir. What's the sergeant major going to bet on? Man of Temperton, sir. Used to be his. Now, we don't mind taking his money, do we? I should hope not, sir. My old battalion are all territorial, so I haven't had much experience with these men just called up. Do they usually make complaints? Lloyd, sir? Yes. Well, all soldiers like a bit of a grumble, don't they, sir? After all, it's not very funny to have to run when you feel like walking or to stand up when you feel it could do with a sit-down, or to have someone shouting at you when you're doing your best. No, I, I think it does a man good let off steam a bit, sir. Yes, if, if that's all it is. Well, uh, new, sir, but there's some good men there. Lloyd, for one, he hasn't got the hang of things yet, but he's got the knack of handling men all right. <laughs> he's a bit of a nuisance at the moment, but later on he'll make an NCO. Now, Luke, got him under the game, have you, sir? The agent was talking about taking some of his men for the mortar platoon. The way Sergeant Fletcher here carried on, <laughs> well, you think someone is pinching his watch? <laughs> he even said that professor bloke, uh, Davenport, said he had the makings of a soldier. Well, there's nothing much wrong with Davenport. Another few weeks in the army won't put rights on, Major. Stainer? Yes, what about him? Well, the same with him, sir. He was a bit of a mess when he first came in, but he'll shake down with the rest in time. We haven't got a dud there, sir. See what I mean, sir? Optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> same thing in France, too. If we'd only had the guns and planes and tanks and things, it might all have... Well, anyway, that was that. There'll be no more of that nonsense. It's going to be a big change. Yes, sir. Things are going to be very different from now on, son, Fletcher. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Good evening, bro. Good evening, sir. Here! He's given it to him! He's given it to him proper! Who's given what to who? The old screamer! Perry's giving him a right dressing down. I just heard him. What did he say? He says, things are going to be different from now on. I don't want any more of that nonsense. He says, there's going to be a change. Go on, what did the sergeant say? He says, yes, sir. That's all. Very slow. The sort of silly look on his face. Almost human he was. <laughs> <laughs> Had all the stuff he knocked out of him. Good for you, Evan. You're a very plucky lad. Oh, yeah, you an apology, Evan. Well, I don't know. From now on, he'll be as quiet as a little lamb. You see, tomorrow he'll be saying, please. Come on, you light infantry, not horse marines! Tuscan! Tuscan, get that fat side over! Dex, come on! Come on, come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Get come on! 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Parsons. Come on, come on, the rest of you. Come on, go on, just get... Oh, just come on, stop. Well, get him stuck, get out of it. Now, what have you done? Don't hang about that line. Come back and take it in your stride. Quick as lightning you ought to be. Come on, Lord, come on, get some of that fat off. Get over there. Come on, Parsons, you can do it, lad. Where's your brains, man? What's the matter with you? Swing across! Don't fall! Blur! Don't have that fat off! Come on, Parsons. Right, you can use a mobile canteen. Well, what about it, Sergeant Fletcher? Not bad, sir. Not bad at all. Parsons held him up a bit at the second obstacle. What is the matter with him? I don't quite know, sir. There must be something wrong with him, no grousing at all, as if there was something on his mind. Tomorrow he'll be saying, please. I only said what I heard. Well, you heard wrong. Like I always said, the... Oh. The officer seemed to be enjoying the fun. Grinning he was. I saw him. Things has got to be different, that's what he said. Oh, shut up. Oh, well, I've come to your conclusion. What's that? I don't like the army. Two plans, two teeth. Razor blades? Foreigner razor blades, yes. Tea, please, and a piece of chocolate Swiss roll. I pay attention. Go on eating. Oh, here he comes. Can't leave us alone for a minute. I'm supposed to organize this regimental concert, and I shall badly need some help, so if any of you can uh, 
play anything, dance, sing, pull things out of hats? Can I have your names? I shall need all the help I can get. I do recitations. Shall I put my hand up? You do, and I'll clock you. Well, think it over and, and let me know. If... Well, I nearly got knocked down by the rush. Oh, they'll be all right, sir. Why don't you want to help him? You won't help us. Why should we help him? <laughs> you don't seem to be having a very good time. Don't you ever get into town? Well, occasionally, but there's only one cinema we see in the film this week. Why don't you come over to tea? Oh, yes, oh, please. Well, okay. when? when? Sunday. What, all of us? Well, uh... If we keep it down to seven. <laughs> All right. What time? Four. Half past. Four. Who do we ask for? Marjorie Gillingham. Number 12, Elmore Street. 12, Elmore Street? It's just... Right. Off. Hold in. All right, we'll find it. Goodbye. 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 See you Sunday. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good. Can you ring the bell? Steady, steady. She may be looking out of the window. <clears throat> oh, hello, chaps. Miss Gillingham. That's right. Come on in, boys. How many of you are there? Just the seven, Sergeant. Oh, quite a party. Last man in shut the door, will I? Okay, Sergeant. Charming house you have here. Bit of a change after our barrack room. Less congestion. Yeah. More room, too. Well, sit down anywhere. Mrs. Gillingham will be down in a minute. Well, how are you liking the army? Need you ask? Hmm. Wish you get over that. Uh, a mean long? Seven weeks. Seems like years. I know. What are you in? Bombers? I know. Fighters. On leave? Well, sick leave. Oh, you're lucky. We could do with a bit of that. How'd you angle it? What are you, <laughs> really sick, eh? <laughs> well, shut up a bit. Oh, but I'm all right now, though. Uh, see this wristwatch? Amazing. It landed five miles from where I did, and they told me afterwards it was still going when they picked it up. Uh, some farmer chap found it. Bit of luck, eh? Of course, I didn't really mean to. Hello, so you got here all right. Mother will be down in a minute. Come on, Buster. We'll have to hurry or we'll miss the beginning. Well, so long, boys. They're going to see that Merchant Navy picture. See it? Marvellous job those chaps do. And they don't wear a uniform. Come on, darling. Cheerio. Goodbye. Cheerio. Oh, Goodbye. Bye. Bye. I wish we wore uniforms with a collar and tie. This makes you feel like a convict. Well, what do you think you are? Oh, how do you do? I'm Marjorie's mother. I'm so glad she persuaded you to come along. The boys in the battalion before you always used to come. Oh, thank you so much. So did the boys from the Ack Ack Battery. Until they moved. I always say, if Marjorie can have her canteen, I don't see why I shouldn't have mine. Now, do sit down, please, all of you. Uh, that's right. Yes, that's the comfortable chair. And you can put your plate on that little table there. This is extremely kind of you, Mrs. Gillingham. That's right. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm afraid this place is rather untidy, but this house is really a little bit too big for me. Now, do make yourselves at home. Well, and how do you like the army? We don't. Oh, dear, what a pity. Now, hands up for China tea and hands up for Indian. And then what does he do? As he's marching up and down till our feet are nearly bleeding. I tell you, he's a proper b very nasty fella. And the officer just smiled and then asked for volunteers for the camp concert. Both the sergeant and the officer, they're as bad as each other, Mrs. Gillingham. That's right, Mum. That's true. Oh, dear, it is a shame, isn't it? Who'd like another chocolate biscuit? Yes, please. But they haven't taken your appetite away from you, have well, they? The food's not good enough for that, Mrs. Gillingham. Terrible. Do you know, since we've been in the army, we haven't had a proper bath? Well, a shower's really quicker. Sure. You can always have one here if you bring your own towels. Only let me know in time. I have such trouble with the boiler. Oh? What do you burn? What sort of boiler is it? I could probably show you a saving. I'll pop in sometime and have a look at it for you. I wish you would. Marjorie's friend Buster couldn't do anything with it, though, and naturally he knows all about engines and things. You poor lads, your life sounds terribly gloomy. It is, Mrs. Gillingham, it is. But you said just now you have concerts and things. Yes, if we do the acting. There was a boy in the act act used to recite a lot. There was one poem, The Lynching of Black Maguire. How did it start? It was hot that summer in kicking horse. And the earth was parched and dry. Full of geographical license, of course, but very exciting stuff. Good old Sid, why don't you volunteer? Well, I was thinking maybe I will. You know what I told you. Oh, right. I'll wait, Ted. Let him do it if he wants to. Well, I thought I was joining the army, not a circus. It's time we went, isn't it? There's that fire picket. Do come again next week. And don't forget, bring your towels. You're not going already, are you? They've got the fire watch. Now, don't you let the other boys bully you. If you want to volunteer for the concert, you jolly well do. 
Now try it again without holding it. Right, sir. Close them. Now open. Oh, that's perfect. Everything all right? Oh, yes, thank you, sir. We had a lot of trouble with the curtains to start with, but they're working perfectly now, sir. Good. Um, old Colonel Wormsley's coming over and bringing a band. And he's also going to do some monologues. He's been very helpful, sir. Well, the Brigadier's coming, so it must be good. What are our men doing? Well, Cook Sergeant Trubshaw is going to do his bird noises, sir. And Beck in my platoon's going to do something. Good. It was up that summer at Kicking Horse, and the earth was parched and dry. Why parched and dry? It's parched and dry. And the town was full. Get on with it, said. We haven't all night, you know. The exercise starts tomorrow. Exercise? Three days in the open, the old division firing off blanks at nobody. Questions ought to be asked in the house about it. A waste of time. A lot of... Listen, listen, please, listen. Look, would you do it like this just to make the earth seem parched and dry? And the earth was parched and dry. Yes, that's good. No, it looks absurd. Now, look, make your minds up, would you or wouldn't you? I've got to do it in a minute. You ought to have thought of that before. Serves you right. Fancies yourself, didn't you? I'll be laughing when you forget your words with the brass hat steel and all. Don't, Ted, <laughs> please. Look, I only did it because of Mrs. Gillingham. Oh, she I said... know, oh, I know. Come on, my lucky lads. Oh, off to you, Mr. Barrymore. <laughs> Never mind them, son. Carry on. Black Maguire in town. The word went round. Come in. In a minute. Go on, go on, Ted. It might be better if you sing it, Sid. <laughs> First item tonight is a band. We're very lucky to have with us this evening the six Pollocks who have come all the way from Hacklesfield to entertain us. Men always like a dance band. I do not care for the things that are like the things that were. Does, does half my heart lie buried there, down by the Rio Grande? Already back? Yes, sir. Now, what do I announce? Uh, the lynching of Black Maguire's. Right. Does the applause warrant an encore? Well, there's back here, so my very yes, far behind. Yes, that's quite all right. That'll be all right, my boy. Now, come along, come along. Come along. Uh, yes, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> For an encore, I propose to give you that well-known dramatic poem, The Lynching of Black Maguire. <laughs> it was hot that summer. I bet Perry knew this was going to happen. The earth was parched and dry, and the town was full of the frontier force, though nobody seemed to know why. That was my piece. Maguire in town. Can you do anything else? Went round no. To steal May I have a word with you, sir? What is it? Men looked with their eyes, nor was there a sound. Oh. The looks were as hard as knives. With what? For looks were as hard as knives. For looks were as hard as knives. The MPs called him at the station, sir. Trying to board the London train. I've got him outside now, sir. All right, I'll see him as soon as this thing's over. Very good, sir. As the sun went down, all there could see, against the glowing ball of fire, hanging from the highest tree, the body of Black Maguire. Uh, go on, Parsons. Well, when we were married, we didn't think about a war, and I got all the furniture on the half purchase. Well, I was called up, and with the money not coming in, we got behind with the payments. And they've been bullying the wife, lawyers, letters, and people at the door. And now they're going to take the furniture away. And she's sick with worry, and with the baby coming and everything, she doesn't know where to turn. So you were off home? Yes, sir. Well, how are you going to deal with all these lawyers? 
Well, they don't do that kind of thing when there's a man around it, just because she's a woman. I don't think a deserter would be much help to her. I don't know what I was going to do, sir. May I see one of these letters? You know, being in the army has a lot of disadvantages. But there is one compensation. You're not alone anymore against anyone. Germans or furniture shops. Do they know you're in the army? Oh, yes, sir. Well, I can put your mind at rest about one thing, Parsons. This is not from a lawyer. This is just a cheap little debt collector's letter dressed up to look frightening. They can't touch your furniture. Well, but it says there, sir. It's just a trick. I only wish you'd seen me about this before. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Well, you know how. Yes? No, nothing, sir. Well, it's rather out of my hands now, Parsons. You have to go before the Colonel in the morning. In the meantime, you remain in close arrest. What time is order, I'm Sergeant Fletcher? Eight o'clock, sir. We march the exercise half past. Right. Well, I'll be there, Parsons. I'll do what I can for you. All right, Sergeant Fletcher. Sir. All right, Parsons, fall in. Parsons is well out of this. I'd rather be here than in the glass house. Wonder why he didn't tell us about it before. Well, whatever it is, we won't recognize him when he gets out of that place. Prosecuted for a few sticks of furniture. I reckon they'll give him field punishment. Having a nice time? Come down here and I'll tell you. Bloody gunners. But they slept in that lorry the last two nights. Well, actually, it's not as comfy as a nice ditch. If you put a ground sheet down, I slept very well myself. Oh, put a shut up. up. Into the left. Keep into the left. Cool. Look. Remember, Perry, everything depends on your getting that bridge as quickly as possible and holding it. Until you do, the company can't get on with its job. All right? Right, sir. Section commanders over here. Look at this. That's B Company. Where are they going? Out of it already, Corporal. I'm far us dead. We got caught in the open. They had a brain gun on us. Oh, bad luck. Huh. Good luck, I call it. Yes. Right, now listen carefully. Our job is to take the bridge which lies just over that hill. We've got to get there without being seen. So make the best use of the ground, and whatever happens, keep your heads down. Can't go on this way, they'll see us. Stop the section, I'll go around here to the right and have a look. This is too stupid for words. Think of the other blokes, they'll be home by now, cushy. I am thinking of them. What's the point of our staying out here for hours? Why can't we get back? <laughs> Easy said, mate. Easy done, too. We could get killed. It often happens on battlefields. What, killed intentional? But that's not fair, Shut then. up. This is all right. Tell him to come on. Very good, sir. Best use of ground. Lloyd, what do we do? Follow me. When I give the word, do as I do. Your front. There they are, sir. Won't be long now. Home sweet home again. I wonder what's for tea. I don't care as long as there's pickles, then, for a lovely long pint of beer. I'll come with you, mate. Well, look who's here. Where'd you come from? Did they give you hell? Haven't you been? Yes, I've been. Well, what did they do to you? Gave me 48 hours. What to do? Go to London. Get things straightened up. There you see. Yeah, I thought you weren't coming back till tonight. 
Oh, we did extra special well, so they said we needn't stay. We have Evan to thank for that. I reckon Evan should be the officer. We'll do all right, eh, boys? Better get your wet things off instead of talking. What happened with the Colonel? Well, of course, I had the wind up at first, but Petty was there and spoke for me. Well, the Colonel chewed me up properly, but, well, it wasn't too bad. Petty's fixing up about a war emergency grant for me. Hilda's ever so pleased. How did you come to get back? Influence. Well, we're home again anyway. Oh, you lovely bed. I wonder what the others are doing. Probably still capturing bridges covered with mud. Serves them right. Blimey, look out. Here he is. He's ready in the cookhouse, sir. Shall I march him down, sir? Pity we didn't see it through, sir, eh? When this regiment was formed, our country was doing pretty badly. Napoleon's armies were just across the channel getting ready to invade us. We'd had defeat after defeat, and a great many people thought we were finished. We weren't, but not because we were lucky. When the first battalion of this regiment marched, it was against Napoleon. Tel Aviv, 1809, that was the first battle they made their own. And they marched 42 miles in 24 hours of a Spanish summer. And every man jack of them carried a 60-pound pack. Talavera, look at your cap badges, you'll see the name on it. And the other battles, too. Barossa, Sabogal. At Sabogal, together with four companies of riflemen, they defeated five times the number of Napoleon's troops. Salamanca, Ortez, Waterloo, Alma, Sebastopol, Tel El Kabir, Mons, Ypres, Somme. Those are battle honours. You're allowed to wear that badge with those names on it, to show that you belong to the regiment that won them, and that when the time comes, you'll do as well as they did. Last year, that badge was in France. This year, in Libya. It hasn't been disgraced yet. Now you're wearing it. I know what went wrong today. It so happens that Captain Edwards doesn't. You needn't worry, I'm not going to tell him. He's quite depressed enough as it is to think it was his company that let the whole battalion down. But I just want to tell you this. If you ever get near any real fighting, I don't suppose you'll ever be good enough, but if you do, you'll find that you're looking to other men not to let you down. If you're lucky, you'll have soldiers like Captain Edwards and Sergeant Fletcher to look to. If they're lucky, they'll be with another company. All right, Sergeant Fletcher, they can have their tea. Platoon! Chad! All right, get the rest of your staff off. We're falling outside in five minutes. What's up? Hear him talk, you'd think we'd lost the war. Yes. He'll be as bad as the sergeant now. Come on, Johnson! Come on! Mr. Penny's miles ahead! Let's catch him up! the day you missed on the exercise. Was that any better, sir? Seventeen and a half. Sergeant Fletcher? Sir? Opposite this time, sir. Seventeen and a half. That's better than the other platoon, sir. Yes. Ooh, seventeen and a half minutes. That doesn't sound humanly possible. You didn't do it in seventeen and a half. You were right behind. So was Bart. Bungie. Just in front of you, though. Well, what does it matter? He don't care if we break our Persian nicks. How much better do we have to be to get a thank you out of him? I don't blame him. Hey? What? Listen, who's talking? Well, you've been jolly decent to me. You weren't there, you twelve, so shut up. We only did it for a joke, anyway. I think he'd be decent enough to see that. Parsons! Sergeant? Over here. Well, we've asked for it. And we got it. For the duration. Cunning little beggar, sucking up. 
If Bill doesn't come down soon, there'll be no tea left. Good. Serve him right. I wonder what he's sucking up to Perry and Fletcher for. Trying to get more leave for himself, I should think. So long, boys. See you later. Bye. Stay home, Audrey. Just stay on with that sugar. Get at the scones. Isn't Bill down yet? I do hope the bath water's still hot. How's the leg now, Bert? Thank you. It's rather worse since I put the iodine on it. It'll be better later, I expect. You should see my leg, Mrs. Gillingham. It's got a bruise on it about as big as that plate. Just put those down there to keep hot, will you, Tim? Yes, Mr. Let's I can eat and move it. Did it on that perishing tree obstacle. Well, you ought to take it slower if you can't do it without hurting yourself. I didn't notice you taking it any slower. You were so busy trying to impress our loving officer. Now, look here. Oh, shut up, both of you. Boy, boys. I don't know what's come over you lately. Well. Now, stop quarrelling and eat your scones. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Ah, here's Bill. Now, he's not grumpy. Sorry I've been so long. That's all right. Oh, yeah. Right. Don't right. give in a scone. Oh, do you have a scone, Lord Fauntleroy? Oh, I wonder who that can be. Surely you wouldn't rather sit here, Bill. It's more comfy. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Very nice of you. Oh, it's another soldier. It's Fletcher. What? Fletcher. Fletcher. He asked me about baths at the camp. So that's what it was. And you told him about this place? Yes. You. BFU. Listen. Mrs. Gillingham? Yes? I heard at the camp that you were kind enough to let people have baths, and I wondered if... Oh, yes, do come in. It's no trouble at all. I know how difficult it is for you boys at the camp. Perhaps you'd like some tea while the water heats up. Well, thank you very much. Uh, what's your name? Perry. This is Perry, boys. Oh, we have met. Oh, you know each other. That's splendid. I hope you haven't got the same dreadful officer these poor lads have got. Same one. Well, not really dreadful. Suppose you find it very trying, too. Yes. I'll pop down and tune up the boiler again. It's no trouble. Oh, dear. He doesn't really understand it very well. The sugar? Please. I, I think perhaps I'd better go down and see what he's doing. Charming woman, Mrs. Gillingham, sir. Yes, she seems very nice. Fine. She, she lets us have baths here every week. Oh, you're lucky. No, thanks. I got some. Any truth in the rumor, sir, that the sergeant major's got bronchitis? Just lost his voice on parade, I think. Shouting, sir? Just giving orders, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Will you have a cake, sir? Oh, thank you. You shouldn't have bothered, Ted. Here, Mrs. G. Yes? You know that officer we was talking about? Who, the horror? That's him. Perry? Oh, what did I say? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. I wonder what I'd better do now. Well, it'll take at least a half an hour for this to heat up. I wonder if it'd be all right if we were to tell him that... He's uh, going out. I'm sure the lads would appreciate it, Mrs. G. Oh, so I don't quite like to do that. Well, you see, it's very awkward. Him and us don't get on well together. Still... Well, this'll go out in any case. You see, this don't work. Hmm. I always do this. Yes, well, of course you can do that. Well, of course, if you don't get on together, perhaps it would be better if he went. I'll tell him. Thanks, Mrs. G. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I never discovered was, who really did lynch Black Maguire? <laughs> well, sir, I was just going to explain, you see. Oh, it was suicide. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes. It was not suicide, sir. The whole poem is really based on fact. Actually, a lot of people believe that Black Maguire was never lynched. Oh, must have been. <laughs> Mr. Perry, the water will be hot in a few minutes. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, next time we have a concert, sir, I expect Luke could play us the bagpipes. Oh, Saturn, sir, uh, if they'd like it. As long as he doesn't practice in the barrack room, sir. <laughs> a bit near the company office. <laughs> <laughs> I used to study jazz some time ago, sir, and if there is another concert, I could probably do some hot drumming or crooning or something. Spare us that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in the next concert, Ted? Concert? Who, me? Well, I couldn't do nothing, sir. Well, we wouldn't want a shambles like we had last time. There must be something you can do. Well, I might tell a few of my stories. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the brigadier would like that. Well, maybe he wouldn't like him in public, sir, but if I could get him alone in a corner, I think he'd be highly delighted. I don't know. I'd try that once. Captain Edwards seems quite pleased with the platoon. What, with us, sir? Apparently, we've improved a lot lately. How do we compare with the others, sir? Oh, I don't know. They've been at it a good deal longer than we have, you know. Well, we can do anything they can do, sir. Yes, yes sure. Sure. Hope, sir. I'll hold you to that. By the way, I heard something else that might interest you. 
Leave starts next week. But for all of us, when do we go? Yes, sir. Sir, have you heard that one about the old gentleman with the long white beard and the nudist pen? <laughs> <laughs> this is Crew. Crew Station. Crew. Jim! Passengers for Liverpool, Shrewsbury, Chester Jim. and the Hecclesfield should change here. Come on, London train. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get home, Ted? Put a pair of slippers on. What after that, Ted? Send the kids off to the pictures. <laughs> Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Have a good leave. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Two whiskies. Are those the awful men you wrote to me about? No, that's another lot. Quite different. So that's his missus, eh? A nice bed of stuff. Turn it up, will you? <laughs> Porter, Cardiff. 10.43, this platform. What's happened to the old 10.31, then? Took it off. Go on, lovely service, that was. Here's the Glasgow train over the bridge. Yes, number three, look. Is that us? Certainly is. Kill Ted. Kelso rise, here I come. Go on, Ted. Come 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 on, Ted. She's your daughter. She's got her mind of her own, too. All right, turn it up a bit louder. I suppose the army's still all potato peeling, eh? No. You should have joined the Welsh Guards. They sing beautifully. Light infantry, move faster, Mrs. Daniel. What's this in your cap? Badge. I know that, Evan. I'm not dark, but what does it say? Tell, uh... There you are. Talavera was a battle before. Did you win it? Of course. There's a battle on us. Look at the rest. Busaco, Barossa, Sabugal. You can't fight any war without infantry. That infantry stuff's as old as the hills. Air power, tanks, they're the new weapons. Engines of war. The only engine the infantryman has is a poor old human body, and that has grievous limitations. I don't agree. Yes. Now, what I mean... Listen, is... Sam, an infantryman is one of the most highly skilled technical men in the modern army. He has to be a mechanic, a gunner, an explosives expert, and an athlete to begin with. He has a greater variety of weapons than all the rest of the army put together. And he has to be trained in not just one sort of tactics, but in every sort. Street fighting, tank hunting, wood clearing, and all the rest. That's what we're going on to when I get back. Has the quality deteriorated, Mr. Thurtle? Not really, Mr. Davenport. It's old stock. Of course, those cupid bird baths that used to be two guineas, they come out at four pounds ten now. Purchase tax, of course. If I were the public, Thurtle, I'd do without a bird bath. <laughs> That's what it does. It does? But the public must be made to buy. Has the war completely deprived us of initiative? What? <clears throat> Yes, madam, what can we show you? What happened to Betty and Joyce, then? Betty's in munitions. Joyce is in the ATS, got her commission. Should have thought you'd have got yours by now. <laughs> they tried to get me to take one. I didn't want it. No stripes, no pips, no responsibility. Just a nice, easy life with the boys. She is sweet. It's been such fun, Jim. Yes. Back tomorrow. I wonder how much longer it'll last. It stands to reason, rumble or no rumble. Attack Italy, that's what I say. Only let the dogs do it. Leave it to the guards or the green coats or the skirts or the umbrella danglers, and it ain't worth doing. Put the old Duke of Glendon's light infantry. I dare say, I dare say, but the reason why we won't do it is because Rommel's going to be in Cairo by Christmas. In any case, Hitler intends to synchronize his Egypt push with a blitzkrieg on Gibraltar. Oh, you'll have to do more than that, eh, eh Dicky? <laughs> <laughs> it's all very well for you to laugh. You'll see. This time next year, we'll have our back to the wall. And who's to blame? The people at the top, what are they doing? Just sitting back and doing nothing. Absolutely nothing.
pardon, Greedy. Sorry, sir. Well, I call this meeting because I got some news for you. The information I have is security. So I know I can depend on you to keep your mouth shut about it. Is that understood? Yes, yes, yes. Sir. I don't know very much about it myself, but we're going abroad. And the circumstances are rather unusual because, for security reasons, we're not getting the ordinary embarkation leave. Instead... They're still there, Sergeant Major? I don't know. It would be something if we could get our marching orders, eh? Yeah. The lads need it. They're fully trained and fighting fit. They want action. I don't blame them. The papers may have forgotten Greece and Crete, but I haven't. What do you say? Yes, I reckon you've earned it all right. Well, so have you. I'm getting on, Ned. Mobile war's a young man's job. Office work's more in my line nowadays. I can see it the old man's eye. Yeah, you're kidding. Office work, you? Well, I got plenty of it, ain't I? Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Hello, I thought you would have been in the sergeant's mess. Oh, no, sir. I was just cleaning up one or two things. Well, the Colonel's just given us some good news. Oh, yes, sir. What uh, sort of good news, sir? We're all going off on a two months course in about a month, towards the end of October. What uh, kind of course, sir? Something new. Must be. We've done nearly everything now. Anyway, it's pretty important. All leaves been put forward. I see, sir. Everybody has to have their seven days by the end of September. Very well, sir. I'll see the Sergeant Major in the morning about the leave roster. All right. Sergeant Fletcher. Yes, sir. When you tell the men, don't tell them what you're thinking. Nice. Yes. Nice. Yes. Good night. And I was the only boy. Nothing like better than a good old sing song. Horrible noise coming from somewhere. I think it was Fletcher's lovely voice. Here. It's just lot here, harmonizing. I'll have to know. I used to sing in a choir till my voice broke. Oh, and then they called you up. All oh, right, just a moment. Another ten minutes till lights out, Tony. All right, all right, Corporal. I haven't said a word, have I? Now listen. I've got some good news for you. In October, we're all going off on a special course of two months training. And I should say, it's going to be very tiring. So the CO has brought all leave forward a bit. It's all right. It's something anyway. Well, I thought you'd like to know. That you can write home and so forth. That's all. The new leave list will be out tomorrow. No. Nice, nice, sir. Sir. Well, we get our leave early anyway. Yes, and the next one later. Don't forget that. I wonder what it is. We've done everything twice already. Well, I can tell you what it is. They've got no real fighting for us to do. So somebody says, what should we do with the ninth DOGs? And somebody else says, why not give them a bit of training? That always keeps them quiet. Still, spot a leave won't be so bad, will it? I read in the paper the other day that we're not going to open a second front till 1947. If we don't get some action soon, I'm going to ask for my cards back. Perhaps we're going to be paratroops. Hmm. I'd like to see a battalion of motorized infantry drop by to parachute. Who's room orderly tomorrow? I am. Better clean out the inside of that stove. It's full of fag ends. OK. I wonder why the sergeant was so pleased with himself. <laughs> he wants to get home to his wife. Yes. I suppose that's it. She has my sympathy. Fancy seven old days with him by numbers. It's a funny thing, but there was a time when I couldn't have imagined him having a wife. Pity seven days is so short, eh? Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Bill. You'll be back soon. That's right, Hilda. Hello, Ted. Oh, hi. Hello, oh, Bert. Have a nice leave. Yes, fine, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Well, it's very nice of you to come and see me, old Fertile. Pleasure, Davenport. Very pleased to have seen you again. Take your seats on the 1040. Hello, Luke. Have a good leave? Oh, grand, Sergeant, thanks. Well, uh, take your coat. Thanks. Well, goodbye, dear. Bye-bye. Funny sort of war, isn't it? Here one minute and gone the next. That's right. Is that Mr. Perry over there? Yes. Looks all right. Good as a regular. Almost. <laughs> goodbye, dear. It's funny how much of our lives we seem to spend on platforms. Yes, the amount of times you said goodbye on this one in the last three years. <laughs> I wonder what we'll look like in 1970. Darling, don't wait. Jimmy, if you should ever go away without saying goodbye to me, I'd never forgive you, Jimmy. You'd better get in, Jeff. We're due out. Okay, Sid. And don't forget, any special thing you want, it's your birthday soon. I'll let you know that. Bless you, son. Take care of yourself. I will. I won't wait.
Come on, darling. See you soon. Don't be too easy with Phyllis. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. I will. See you in a fortnight's time. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. God bless you, dear. God bless. Lights down. Be wild. See you in a fortnight, I said. Don't worry, Ted, we're going in Bros for a nice warm climate. I can taste the bananas already. Hello, sir. Hello. Any idea where it is we're going? The room is Burma. Jungle fighting. They say it takes a year to learn it. Ah, uh, not our platoon, sir. Perhaps we're going for a trip around the world. I don't care where we're going. I'm ready for anywhere except maybe Iceland. We wouldn't be going there with all this transport. Oh, they made mistakes before now. Well, there, where put the ring over the hook? I wonder where we are going. Shh, listen. We're moving. One, two, one, two. Deep, get that lovely fresh air in your lungs. Come on, Mr. Perry, I can see you. Come on, sir, come on. Steady. Break off! It's going round the ship so that we pass Gibraltar during the night. Do you think there's possibly no, any... I have the faintest idea. I think I saw the outline of the rock in the night, sir. Ah, that was a shadow of that ship out there. No, really, I haven't heard anything. As soon as I do, I'll pass it on to you. Where do you think we are, Beck? Thank you, sir. Oh, I should say one... No, uh, two days from the Cape, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sit down. Well, we just had some very good news. Major Edwards is telling the rest of the company and I'm going to pass it on to you. The Eighth Army have just won a big victory at Alamein and Rommel is in full retreat. Oh! Oh! We haven't heard half of it yet. <laughs> now we, in this convoy, are part of a big invasion force, American as well as British, that is going to French North Africa to remove the enemy from there and then cut Rommel's only line of retreat. We land about 40 hours from now. I can't quite tell you where yet, but I can tell you this. This is the first step in the great offensive it's going to make Hitler and Mussolini put up the shutters and go out of business. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the past, we've all had our ups and downs, and many of us have been pretty fed up at times. Not people like Brewer and Davenport, of course. <laughs> <laughs> However, that's all behind us now, and it looks as though all this training we did is going to come in pretty handy after all. Now, I'll just give you what details I can. Now, if we land at Phillipville, there's a three-star hotel there with an American bar, which will doubtless have beer in stock. Those who prefer more exotic beverages will find your curiosity amply satisfied at the mysterious bazaars and coffee houses of the Casbah, or Muslim Quarter. We ought to make you a corporal for that. We did a brochure on Algeria in 38. Of course, it's not the kind of beer we're used to. He only started to drink ginger beer before we left home. I can't see us having much time for beer. No action, eh? With all this equipment. Yes, I shan't be sorry when we get going with it. I won't have something to write home about now, eh? Jerry's around again.
mate. Guns? No, death charges. I shouldn't let anyone catch you smoking in here if I were you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Now walk to your boat stations. Do that up, Luke. Yes, sir. Rifle city. Right. Sergeant Fletcher, go to the boat station. No one's to go near a boat till they're told to. There goes up. All right here. All right, what was it, torpedo? Yes, on the port side. Power started in number four hole, sir. Get every hose along and tell the engineers.
How's it going? What's the position? I can't hold it any longer. Right, I'll tell the skipper. The fire's out of control down there. We can't hold it any longer. Right. Destroyer coming alongside. Abandon ship. Abandon ship! Destroyer on starboard side! Other side, abandon ship! <laughs> It's time we were away. Get your nets adrift. Get down, men. Keep your heads down. She may go any minute. I knew we needn't have bothered with them carriers. She might have gone up sooner if we hadn't. Nice lot of transport, that. The best we've had. All right here, boys? Yes, thank, thank you, sir. How's the sergeant? Well, the doctor says he'll be all right in a week. He was lucky. What happened to your hands, Taylor, Byrne? Well, it was just a grey suit, nothing. Well, take care of it. You got a dressing? Yes, sir. I expect the colonel will be pretty disappointed when he finds himself with only half a battalion. They can't start without us, though. Can they, sir? In this ship, we'll get there before them. Yes, that's right. Oh, I'm sorry, boys. I'm afraid we're out of it. We're being taken back to Gibraltar. The Hampshire Regiment, the Lincolnshire Regiment, and units of the Guards. I don't know. 
seem to have forgotten all about us, they do. No wonder they made no progress in Tunisia. There's not a sign of the dogs anywhere. Not since Crete. Too many guardsmen up the top, that's the trouble. Still, the Eighth Army ain't doing so bad. <laughs> if the government only kept his eyes open and put the dogs in when there was trouble, the war'd be over by now. It ain't the government's fault, Bobby. Yeah, that's who I blame, the government, the men at the top. I wonder what they have done with the dogs. What does your husband say, Mrs. Brewer? He says things are still very dull. Well, they all say that, don't they? Mm. Oh, I don't care how dull it is, as long as he's safe. They're glad they've left the rock. Of course, he couldn't say Gibraltar because of the censor, but I know. They must be either in Algeria or Tunisia, mustn't they? Mm. If only we knew. Perhaps it's better we don't know. Mm. Ted says there's a stripe going and old Perry... He says your husband's pretty certain to give it to him. You've no more recent news than that, have you, Mrs. Perry? Bill says something about a stripe, too. He says he has a sporting chance. I wonder whether you... I'm afraid I don't know. All Jim writes about are the flies. You should know you're driving. What a dump. Not even a flick house with an army picture. I'd hate to be an Arab in peacetime. How about them harems? I haven't seen any yet. Nothing but flies. Talk about the mysterious East. I reckon Lyons Corner House, Coventry Street's got more mystery than what this has. Well, this isn't, strictly speaking, the East. What is it, then? Well, I suppose you could call it the Middle East or the Near East at a pinch. Well, heaven preserve us from the Far East, that's what I say. Perry, that's your area over there, by Rispoli's Cafe. Right, sir. You come with me. Yes. Back! Good afternoon. Beck, tell him that this is the platoon area and we hope he'll cooperate with us while we're here. Very good, sir. Uh, Monsieur le lieutenant, de qui est le centre de Laurent de Semont de notre uh, platoon et qu'il invite votre coopération pendant notre séjour. Oh, he laughs at the idea, sir. Well, tell him we're going to kick the Germans out of his country. Maybe he'll like that. Very good, sir. Uh, Monsieur le lieutenant, dit que nous voulons vous de Saint-Pierre de Bosch. Et sûrement vous voulez la même chose. Je veux qu'on m'affiche la paix. Says he's a pacifist, sir. Je vais vous informer, monsieur, il y a des batailles qui déroulent dans le nord et dans le sud et dans l'est. Ici, il n'y a rien. Allez là-bas, dans les grandes villes, à Soutro. Je n'ai pas le droit de vous permettre de rester ici. Dites-lui, s'il veut des batailles, que je peux lui donner des renseignements. <laughs> he says to tell you, sir, that the fighting's in the north, in the south, in the east, but not here. He's telling us. <laughs> and that he cherishes the peace in these parts. He invites us to go to Sutra, where there are a great many Germans. He says that Sutra is a bigger place than this. Uh, that is a fact, incidentally, sir. And that if you wish, he can give us an address or two. That's very cozy of him. Anyway, our orders to stay here, and here we stay. Very good, sir. Uh, Monsieur Je le déteste les soldats. Je déteste le bruit. Allez, allez-vous-en. He says he's not very fond of noise, sir, or of troops. Repeats that he's a pacifist and invites us to go. Allez, filez! He says he invites... Yes, I got it. All right, Sergeant Fletcher, we'll move in. Very good, sir. Rock, nothing but rock. Fancy having to farm this stuff, poor devils. Well, it ain't exactly a picnic for us. <laughs> Aye, but we haven't got to live here. I can't imagine why the enemy should want to take this place. No such luck. We won't even see him from here. Now who's worrying? Couldn't be you, could it, Brewer? <laughs> no, it's not this time. It's Luke here. He's worrying about how the farmers get on. Well, let's hope he won't be here long enough to find out. We moving, sir? I don't think so just yet. Anyway, that's what I'm here to tell you about. All here, Sergeant Fletcher? Yes, coming, sir. At the double there. Hurry up. Are we going to have an answer concert, sir? 
No, I think the concert part is all a little further forward. <laughs> all here, Sergeant Fletcher? Yes, sir. Right, now, I'll give you the full details later, but the form is roughly this. Our battalion's in reserve in these villages here, and a long way out in front, our forward troops are in contact with the enemy. You may see the German very lights at night. Well, we're still a long way from them, but there's no reason why we shouldn't keep on our toes, is there? Oh, cheer up, Davenport. What's that? Some sort of tortoise, sir. There's a lot of them about, sir. Some of the men keep them as pets. I'm glad somebody in the place is friendly. <laughs> now, this cafe, the man there doesn't seem to like us very much, but he may improve with care. So when you use the place, try not to break it up and be on your best behavior, right? Yes. Right, sir. Right, 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 sir. Friendly country, this. Look at him. What's up? He hasn't read the beverage report. That's what's wrong. I haven't read it myself. Come to that. He wanted us to leave him alone. Go and fight somewhere else. Don't blame him, but don't blame us either. Yeah. What about this? Couldn't we have a game? Go on, said ask him. Uh, <coughs> uh, Monsieur le patron, est-ce que vous serez très incommodé si nous jouons un peu de darts? Vous avez de l'objection? Go on, put it up and play. Come on, Beck, it's time to go and get orders. Oh, come on. Cool, look at that. Very light, sir. I wonder if they're ours. No. Pretty near, too. Kind of creepy, isn't it? Come on. I hang like it. That's good. Uh, 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 21. Guys, I could tell you that. Hold on. 39. Oh, oh, oh. oh well. What a nice yeah. game, boys. Simple. We caught the audience. Nine. Oh. Better. Uh, 21. Better than no. <sighs> no. How do you stand, Bat? You're 19 down. Hey, what's the idea? Go on, let him have a go. What, let him break up the game? It doesn't matter, let him have a go. Ah, so jump, Mushakalet. Look, he's taking cover. Thinks it's a spear. You go where my mess all ruin? Idiot, espèce d'andouille. Un grand trou. Méchant. You play like that. Beginner's luck, that's all. Voyez, n'est pas nécessaire de désagréer les maisons d'autres. Allez, filez, filez. C'est très désagréable. Filez. Et vous 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 conduisez comme ça devant les Anglais. Ayez honte. C'est terrible, ça. Continuez. What you want is double two. 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 two, 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 two. Yeah. Oh, shot. beautiful, eh? Right? Right. Hey, what about beginner's luck? You've been playing like this for three weeks. All right, all right. What's the lecture today, Sarge? Aircraft recognition. Well, it's been as fine as anywhere in England. Yes, it's been a good year all round in Berkshire. The potatoes and sugar beet look like coming on nicely. And other crops are also satisfactory. Of course, Michaelmas has been considered for ages the termination of the farmer's year, but things have altered. Thousands of boys and girls on holiday from school have been helping in the fields and working like Trojans in the harvest camps. It warms a farmer's heart to see a thing like I saw last week in the village of Redshaw by Farrow. A little girl, she couldn't have been older than five. Switch it off. Was walking Get in! Shed! All right, sit down. Smoke if you want to. I had hoped that we would have seen rather more enemy aircraft around here than we have done, so that you could have kept up with your aircraft recognition without using these model things. 
However, all we have seen is a couple of rather dreary looking reconnaissance planes, so we'd better just run through the German types to make quite sure you haven't forgotten them. We'll start off with a few questions. What's this one? Davenport? Messerschmitt 109F, sir. That's right. This one. Luke? Stuka, sir. That's right. Brewer? Focke Wolf 190, sir. Stainer? Lysander, sir. Parsons, what's the difference between a Lysander and a Henschel 126? Different undercarriage, sir. The wings of the Henschel are swept back, and on the Lizzie they look as if they're swept forward, but they aren't really. Stan, have you got that machine of yours? Yes, sir. Well, play it. And the rest of you, for heaven's sake, sing. notice and then stand too. Look at it now. I suppose that's what the papers call an inferno. How many magazines have you got? attacked and broken through up forward. All right here? Yes, sir. Something I could do with a fag. I say, Corporal. Quiet, Beck.
What's your front? What's your front? Listen, what's that? Son Fletcher? Yeah. Do you hear that? Tanks. I'll go over and have a look at that section. Men all right? Yes, fine, sir. Good. Now listen. They've broken through behind B Company and we've been ordered back into the village. Got it? Maria! Oh, come! The a Can you see it? No, sir. Let's try down below. across the street. Yes, sir. I'm going to try and get it working. Luke and Brewer will come with me to give covering fire, and I shall want you two back. Right, sir. You stay here and take over. Very good, sir. Now across the street and run like hell. Good luck, chaps. See that, Vickers? Take it into wrist polys and give us covering fire from there. If you can keep their heads down on that hill, it'll be all right. Go on.
with it, Lou. Dry. Bone dry. Dry. I'm ruddy hot. one, sir. One of them gone anyway. Are you both all right? Good, sir. Well, come on back with me, quick. The ammunition, Lloyd? Yes, sir. What you got, Jeff? Four magazines and a bit. Luke, how much ammo? About 25 rounds. Ted? About 20. Davenport? Only about 10. Beck? About 20. Four magazines and about 20 rounds of man, sir. Right, well, go easy on it. Something happening over there, son? They've surrendered. Gosh, I didn't think it'd be as easy as that. There may be a trick. Listen. If you resist us more, you will be destroyed completely. If you lay down your arms, we promise you good treatment and food. Who the hell does he think he's talking to? Yeah, yeah that's right. No. I await your immediate reply. I'd like to take a pot at him. Beck, tell him in German to go to hell. Can you hear me? Yes, you answer quick. Wollen Sie so gut sein in die... in die... I'm terribly sorry, sir. I've forgotten the German for hell. I've never had to use it much in my line. Oh, he knows English. Go to hell! Everybody OK? Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. Feeling a bit hungry, sir. Breakfast may be a little late this morning. You all right, Brewer? Plenty to grumble about? Yes, sir, sir. Good. going to do. Is that clear? Right. 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 We're going in. Start from here as soon as the smoke comes down. Did you get that? I did, sir. I'll go see the other section. Right. Here it is. Sorry, I forgot the German for hell, sir. It's horrible. Shall 
That's all right, Becky. Come on, lads. Once more for the day you missed on the exercise. <laughs> 